So today is the day when we are finally going to control this little LED thingy. Let's go! Programming outputs is very simple and therefore most times it is the very first thing people do when they start working with microcontrollers. It is the hello world of the embedded world. Although controlling outputs is very easy and can be done with just a few lines of code, first I want to show you what are we dealing with and what are the configuration possibilities when setting output pin. To start off, let's have a look on a basic structure diagram of a single input output port. Such a pin we can configure into four modes. One, digital input, used to read logic states of signals coming to our microcontroller. Two, digital output, which can set signals going out from the microcontroller. Three, alternate function that allows other microcontroller peripherals to take control over the selected pin. And four, analog mode, used together with, for example, analog to digital converter, to convert analog signal voltage value into its digital representation. If we consider only digital output mode, then our block diagram reduces and looks like this. We can see that our output driver is controlled with single data register. Whenever we set a value in ODR register, output control block passes this logic state to MOSFET gates, resulting in setting output pin to high or low. This, however, assumes that pin configuration is set to push-pull, because if we set our output to open drain mode, we are getting rid of PMOS. With this configuration, setting output register to high state results in setting pin to high impedance state. Now that we know how to control microcontroller outputs, let's move on to the board schematic and check what are the states needed to control the onboard blue LED. As we can see, the LED's anode is connected through a resistor to supply voltage and the cathode is connected to PC13 pin. This means that in order to make the current flow through the LED to light it up, we have to set our output pin to logic 0. On the other hand, if you want to turn the LED off, we have to set the output to logic 1. Alright, let's now try to control the LED with actual code. As you may know, Cortex-M are memory mapped devices which means they don't have special instructions to access peripherals. Here is how it looks like in our chip. This memory is divided into several blocks and each of these blocks has its own purpose. We can see a code block with included flash memory, a RAM block containing RAM memory and peripherals block which contains addresses of peripherals of microcontroller. Using these addresses gives us direct access to special function registers and peripherals. So now that we have peripherals register boundaries and we know that our LED is connected to output PC13, we can find out what is the address of GPIOC output port. Using the table from datasheet, we just find GPIOC to get port start address. Here it is 0x40020801. Great, now we can jump to Visual Studio and start implementing the code. We have to configure three things in order to light up our LED. First, we have to set PC13 pin to output mode. For this, we will use GPIO mode register. We can see that in order to set the output mode, we need to set bit value 1. Additionally, this value has to be written in proper place. It is bit 26 and bit 27. So let's do this. We want to modify only bits 26 and 27 and not modify any other bits. To do so, we have to use bitwise logical operations OR and AND, OR to set our value, AND to clear whatever is in bits 26 and 27, as it may corrupt the value we want to set using OR. By casting to pointer to 32-bit unsigned integer type and dereferencing it, we are accessing output mode register by word. Next, we want to set output type to push-pull, and we do this using GPIO output type register. Output push-pull is set by writing 0 to corresponding bit, here bit 13. However, 
here we can't just use base address of GPIO C port. We must remember that every register has its own address and for output type register it is GPIO port base address plus register address offset equal 4. I intentionally didn't mention that before because output mode register has address offset 0 and it wasn't that important. You could also configure output speed using output speed register, but because of lightening up the LED, we don't need super fast output, we can leave it as it is thanks to predefined reset value. In our case it is zero, so that means GPIOC outputs are set to low speed, which is enough for us. Still, I want you to check on your own how fast outputs can be switched. Here I can say that high speed configuration allows us to change states with up to 100 MHz frequency. Pretty fast! There is one more thing worth mentioning and that is pull-up, pull-down register. This one is used to enable weak resistors pulling the pin up or down. Reset value keeps them disabled, so we can skip this part. Our output pin is configured and we can now control our output value. For this, we will use mentioned before output data register. Again, we don't want to modify any other bits value except for ODR13. In fact, we don't have to do anything at all because reset value of ODR is zero and we already know that we have to set our pin to low state in order to set the LED on. But still let's do this explicitly and set ODR to zero. Now we are almost ready to launch our code. Everything we did up till now is correct, but it won't work. This is because before peripherals are configured and used, first they must be enabled. Enabling clocks is done using another peripheral called reset and clock control, which has control over all clocks inside the microcontroller. Our GPIO C port is connected to AHB1, so to enable it we set bit GPIO C enable in RCC AHB1 peripheral clock enable register. This operation has to be done before all the others. Ok, let's run this code. Perfect! We know how to configure outputs and our code controls the LED, but this is not over yet. Let's be honest, this code is unreadable. In a few days we won't remember what are these addresses. Without access to datasheet and reference manual, other software developers will not understand anything at all. First we need to get rid of magic numbers. Fortunately, vendors provide header files with user-friendly names and calculated addresses covering peripherals memory map. I can't say for every vendor, but most times these header files are not part of any vendor-specific libraries. Instead, they are often delivered together with CMCs which are standard libraries for all Cortex microcontrollers. Inside such header file we get a full list of preprocessor directives defining peripheral addresses and bit masks for all bits and their possible values. Additionally, there are structure definitions with special function registers defined as variables. Using this file we can easily make our code more readable and user-friendly. Therefore, let's comment what we have so far and again configure PC13 as a pin in output mode with push-pull type and the low switching speed, but this time using defines from device peripheral header file.
Okay, now we have a direct comparison of two versions of code doing exactly the same thing, but I bet you agree with me that second implementation is way easier to read. Let's have a deeper look on what we are actually doing over here. If we go to definition of GPIOC, we can see that it is a GPIOC base address cast to GPIO type dev pointer, where GPIO type dev itself is a structure containing all registers assigned to GPIO port. Fine, and now if the GPIOC is a pointer, then we can simply dereference it with an arrow operator to get an access to structure members. On the right side of these operations, it's nothing really special. To set a register bit, we are using a bit mask with an OR operation. To clear register bit, we are using a bit mask modified with bitwise NOT operator and applied with AND operator. In case you don't know how bitwise operations work, I'll leave a link to Wikipedia covering this topic. Great! We know our code is still doing the exact same thing as before, so there's no need to check it. For you though, it is a good idea to get familiar with it by writing and running this application on your own. Leave a comment what is your favorite peripheral in microcontrollers and what would be interesting for you in future videos. Until next video, cheers!